Ladies and gentlemen, Julia Briggs Parsons. Thank you so much. And hello, everyone. I am very excited to be with you all today to talk about the power of partnerships as part of your marketing strategy. Thank you to GDS for the invitation, and thank you to the great speakers and roundtable leaders for the conversation over the last two days. It's been wonderful to learn from each of you. So my name is Julia Parsons. I lead partnership marketing at Lyft, one of our most successful channels for driving growth and loyalty. And today I'm going to tell you a bit about why this channel is so powerful. My goal is to leave you inspired, pass along some of the passion I feel for partnerships, and hopefully spark some ideas for how you can leverage partnerships in your marketing strategy if you aren't already. First, a little bit of background on myself as it's somewhat unconventional, but uh, it has helped me immensely in creating successful partnerships. I started my marketing career on the creative side. I attended the UCLA School of Design and Media Arts and then worked for Shepard Ferry's creative agency, Studio Number One. I found my way to San Francisco and the tech scene, and I joined an ad tech startup leading user interface design and ultimately running product and marketing for that company. From there, I ran partnerships and marketing for a VR company and landed at Lyft in 2015 to build our partnership marketing team from the ground up. Back then, Lyft was 250 people with a big mission to improve the world one ride at a time and considered a distant second to the competition. Partnerships and the way we approach them played a massive role in success, uh, the success that we experience today. And that is because partnerships are extremely powerful. They have unique superpowers that allow you to build a brand, build preference, and drive significant biz business growth at very little cost. I've also seen firsthand how partnerships can lift up entire communities and address critical social issues. Here's what makes them so powerful. They have three main superpowers. They build credibility and trust for your brand. A partnership can show what you stand for and what you're invested in. It can earn you a place in a conversation you don't yet have a seat at, but you care deeply about. And they can build trust with audiences you care about as a business. Partnerships also create relevance. A partnership can plug you into a current conversation, into a customer journey, and into cultural moments. And lastly, they unlock audiences, giving you access to new audiences, existing audiences where you can build more loyalty, and access to marketing channels that better reach your target audience and outperform all other channels. I'm going to walk us through a few partnerships we've done at Lyft as an example for how each of these superpowers can come to life. I'll also share principles for building great marketing partnerships from the ground up that I use with my team. And we'll save some time for Q&A at the end. The partners you choose reinforce your mission and what you stand for. At Lyft, our mission is to improve people's lives with the world's best transportation. People are at the center of our technology and our services. And safety, connection, bringing joy to the ride are all core elements of our brand. Partners allow us to take action on our mission and drive impact. The Human Rights Campaign is a longtime partner of Lyft. We have shared values around equality and safety for all humans. HRC is embedded in our product. Riders can round up the cost of their ride to the next dollar and donate to HRC. We've shown up together at events, in publications, and raised millions for social causes as a result of our partnership. We actually have several partners in our Lift Up program, including United Way, Goodwill, and the USO. And what you learn after working in transportation for some time is that many communities face barriers to accessing reliable transportation, especially in times like now when there are heightened concerns around safety or reduced routes available through public transit. Our Lift Up partners allow us to improve people's lives with safe, reliable, and accessible transportation to help them in need, uh, help those in need get to medical care, access food, and even go on job interviews. Through a Roundup and Donate feature in the app, the Lyft community collectively has raised tens of millions of dollars in donations for these organizations. And typically that's at less than 50 cents at a time. These partnerships allow us to show up on the ground directly in the communities in need as well, where we can connect those in need directly with access to free or discounted Lyft rides. And that allows us to further act on our mission every day. And we wouldn't be able to do that without the partners that we have within the Lyft Up 
uh, program. Partnerships also build trust. So when you partner with a brand that millions of people love and trust already, and you build a great experience together, you build love and trust for your brand as well. We have a partnership with Disney where we have a fleet of vehicles that provide an elevated experience for guests at Disney parks. It's become one of the highlights for families visiting the parks and uh, you request the ride directly in the Lyft app. This is a picture of the fleet of vehicles. Uh, they are called minivans, uh, which Disney came up with. We thought that was lovely. And Disney cast members, as they call their team, are the drivers. So they provide a custom Disney experience through the Lyft app at their parks. And Disney is an example of a partnership we formed early in our journey at Lyft, which brought much more credibility and trust to a relatively new and innovative company like ours. And as a marketer, the more that I can drive awareness for this partnership with a brand like Disney, the more value and impact I can have on our brand trust metrics. Relevance is the second superpower. Partnerships can embed you in a customer journey core to your business. For example, business travel. We have a longtime partnership with Delta where SkyMiles members earn miles with every dollar spent with Lyft. And our partnership allows us to meet the customer where they are and in the channels that they are already in. Delta's marketing channels allow us to message to potential riders at the time when they are thinking about transportation. For example, as they're preparing to leave the house and open their Delta app to double check their flight time, Lyft is embedded in that customer journey to be available to the Delta customer with a reliable and affordable ride to the airport. And we can uniquely build awareness throughout the different parts of the customer journey. So this is a jetway on to a Delta flight at LAX in Los Angeles. And it's, it's marketing our partnership benefits, but it pulls for the Lyft brand as well. And we did a full takeover of every single jetway in the Delta terminal at LAX with a goal of driving awareness of our partnership. And the reason we did that and we focused on the top of the funnel is that we knew Awareness of our partnership translated into travelers linking their Delta SkyMiles account to their Lyft accounts. And when that happened, we saw preference and increased ridership as a result. So this partnership was a key element of our strategy to win over business travelers at a time when they preferred our competition. And even in the pandemic, we have continued to engage this audience leading up to the return of travel, which I don't know about everybody in this room, but I am very much looking forward to that. So in the meantime, while travel was not as top of mind, but ordering food in was, we partnered with Grubhub to offer our most loyal riders access to free Grubhub Plus memberships through Lyft Pink, which is our rider loyalty program that enhances the Lyft experience with cost savings and priority pickups. And this helped us capture relevance when our most loyal riders who were riding less at the time continued to get value from being paying members of our loyalty program. We also had some fun with the creative. At the time when we were seeing a sea of sameness from brands, including ours, we went on a limb to do something different and the results were beyond our expectations. And they've continued to have positive impact both on our business and Grubhub's. The third superpower is audience. Partner, partnerships can help you reach millions of new and existing customers with a benefit that speaks to them, and it can shift their preference and further lock in loyalty. Our partnership with Chase gives cardholders various benefits. For example, Chase Sapphire Reserve cardholders earn 10x points on every dollar spent with Lyft. And at the launch, uh, they received one year free membership to Lyft Pink. If anyone in the audience is a Chase Sapphire Reserve card holder, I highly recommend you take advantage of this partnership. Um, those who love their points really love this partnership. And all you have to do is pay with your card when you ride with Lyft and you'll earn those points. And possibly one of the most powerful examples of partnership that I've been honored to be a part of this year is the extension of our partnership with Chase, along with Anthem and United Way to make sure that transportation is not a barrier to those needing to get to their vaccine appointments. 
Through the power of these partnerships, we've been able to identify those in need and help support the estimated 15 million Americans that would otherwise miss an appointment due to lack of reliable and affordable transportation. And this connects back to the first superpower of being able to act on your values and mission as a business with like-minded brands. I'll share more about principles for building great partnerships like this one, like the ones we have with Chase and Delta and Disney. Um, first, a quick recap on the impact that partnerships can have as part of your marketing strategy. They build trust and credibility for your brand and shift preference. They help you be relevant and keep you top of mind, embedding you in the relevant customer journeys and shifting perception about your brand with key target audiences. And they drive growth and loyalty by accessing audiences through partners channels with a unique value proposition that speaks to them. And I will pause here and say that partnership marketing is very, very efficient. Uh, they are quite low cost. And in my experience, when marketing into partners channels, you can see up to 10x the performance on a CTA versus your owned channels or your paid channels. So let's talk about some principles for brand building and business driving partnerships that last. First, align on values and mission. When you start a partnership discussion with values and mission, it can go much further to build your brand and business and makes the marketing authentic. I've led partnerships where this was not at the foundation and it makes it very hard to show up together and authentically market together. It may seem minor, especially to teams outside of brand or marketing, but it is critical if you wanna see success at scale. It sounds like someone's at my door, but I will not be answering it. <laughs> Build for long term. So avoid surface level partnerships that are like a flash in the pan. Think for full funnel across brand, product, and growth. How will your, your partnership not only draw headlines, which is a huge value of partnerships, you can get a lot of earned media as a result of announcing a partnership, but how does it draw engagement and outcomes for the business over time? Do what only your two brands can do. So if your competitor or theirs can be plugged in as an easy substitute to your partnership, then you have not found the magic yet. Look for what's authentic about your brand and only your brand to help find the answer to that. For example, at Lyft, we have always leaned into the human element of rideshare and technology as our competition often took on an opposite approach. We also have a more joyful and lighthearted brand. So we lean into that regularly in the way that we show up with partners or build our partnerships. Uh, our partnership and launch with Grubhub was a good example of that. Um, and it allowed us to stand out together. Earn the right to talk to the customer. When planning your marketing, ask yourself if you've earned the right to talk to your customer about the partnership offer that you're putting in front of them. Do you know what they want? Does your partnership answer that need? Or are you just blasting an email to your base because you can? If, it la if it's the latter, your customer will know it and they will not like it. This may seem obvious to us marketers in the room, but a big piece of the role of leading partnership marketing and a team of partnership marketers is also educating cross-functional partners within the business or a partner's business to make sure that the final partnership and marketing strategy reflects the above. I'll pause on that and, and elaborate a little bit. There's, there's been many times where a partnership is set up to either uh, do this thing over here in order to accomplish that over there. So for example, we'll, we'll give this benefit to drivers on the platform in order to unlock the rider marketing channels with a message. And if anytime you're trading one thing for the other and it's actually not fully integrated as a benefit that you've built the partnership around to begin with, like we did with Delta for business travelers, I've seen a lot of those partnerships fall through um, in terms of performance or benefit to the customer because you aren't actually starting with what's the main thing that the customer needs and then marketing that to the customer that needs it. Um, it is not about bartering marketing channels with each other. It's about building a foundational benefit that's going to unlock value for both businesses. So another one that might sound obvious um, but can often be missed is be a great partner. So there's 
different schools of thought on negotiation or how you build a great partnership. And I highly recommend always looking for the win-win, not the winner takes all. So what is the goal that you can share? Uh, How can you help each other be successful as a result of coming together? Not trying to negotiate something that only benefits you or mostly benefits you. Um, Being a good communicator and a great relationship builder is also extremely important. And all of these principles not only apply to the partnerships that you're building with other businesses, but it really applies to the internal partnerships that you need in order to launch these partnerships. Because as a partnerships team, we not only are working with external teams regularly, but we work very cross-functionally across many different teams within Lyft, whether it's across business development, growth, brand, uh, legal, comms, Uh, we are constantly making sure that we are building trust, building relationships, and being great communicators as we bring so many people around the table to launch great partnerships. And lastly, don't forget to have fun. So when you have a foundation of a great partnership that elevates your brand, serves the customer, and drives business growth, then you can really have some fun with how you bring it to life. A strong strategy and super clear goals can be the best foundation for real creativity. And in a post-COVID world, set aside time to celebrate your wins together in person. It can lead to some of the most rewarding relationships of your career. Partnerships are powerful when done well. They drive significant impact for your brand and your business at very low cost. Some principles, just to recap, Align on mission and values, build for the long term, do what only your brands can do, earn the right to talk to the customer, be a great partner, and have fun. I I really hope that our time together has left you feeling a little bit inspired and a bit more passionate about partnerships. This is something that I am extremely passionate about and I have found to be a real passion in my career because it largely feels like an untapped opportunity in most businesses. And oftentimes you can have leadership that does not prioritize partnerships or understand the impact on the business. And I hope that I've shared some examples of how uh, that absolutely is the case uh, in terms of driving impact. I also hope I sparked some ideas of how you can leverage partnerships in your marketing strategy And before we close out, I also wanted to take a moment to talk a little bit about how we measure uh, impact as well as some of the tools that we use. So when I'm launching partnerships and my team is building a marketing strategy, we have the unique position of really getting to manage a full funnel for that partnership itself. It's almost like a mini brand or a mini product that you are launching each time. And at the top of the funnel, we look at who's aware of our partnership. Um, I was having a conversation yesterday with one of the vendors who went into the Lyft app and said, oh, I didn't realize you had a Chase partnership. I said, yes, that is my job to make sure that as many people like you know about the partnership because once that person was aware of the partnership, they were very excited about using Lyft more often. The second piece is then what is the, um, the connection point that starts to build that preference and change in behavior? So with Delta, for example, Uh, That is a account connection between a SkyMiles loyalty account and your Lyft account. With Chase, it is putting your Chase card as your primary payment within the Lyft app. So as marketers, we really focus on achieving that action as the next step. Because from there, then we really start to understand how that one action changed behavior over time. And some of the things we measure on our side in order to understand that shift in behavior is how did ridership increase? What's the incrementality of that change in behavior? What is the overall value to the business as a result of that change in behavior? And how does that compare to the other channels that we use in order to drive growth, acquire new users, uh, embed loyalty into the experience? And internally, it's very helpful for me and my team to be able to take those numbers and show how much more efficient they can be versus some of our other investments because oftentimes partnerships do need a little bit of an internal campaign for people to get support 
um, a lot of what Jane Lee was talking about in her presentation yesterday resonated with me a lot. You need to talk to finance about the investments that you're making up front to launch a partnership and then show the value to the business afterwards to ensure that you continue to have the resources to do partnerships well. That's another piece of partnerships that's really important is that oftentimes it takes the same amount of time and resources to do a really great partnership and a pretty mediocre partnership or a really big partnership or a smaller partnership. So being mindful with your time and your resources and really focusing on the brands and the channels that are going to help you drive the most impact for your business is really important as well. So thank you so much. Um, I'm Julia Parsons, and thank you so much for the time today.